85 kilometers an hour, 20 kilometers an hour, plus a very unhappy Dylan Honevich. And why was he so unhappy in this flat 184k stage? Finishing at the Shalal Sigiliat Rocks. It's another sprint stage, and there was a crazy headwind <laughs> in the middle part of this stage. They were going like 20 kilometers an hour, slower than they were going even in that UAE tour stage last year. There was no breakaway, just sort of Bahrain plugging along, a bit of a sandstorm um, to keep things entertaining, I guess. And there's this big left turn coming up where it's going to go from this headwind, and this wind's going to be, I think, a crosswind or cross tailwind, which is why you see the team starting to assemble like they're in the lead up to a sprint because they are in the lead up to a sprint. They're going to do full lead outs for their GC guys, for their sprinters, for Kronewerken to be in position. And that's why you see Jonathan Milan, I think with Buitrago in his pocket, or maybe it's Masiuk, uh, trying to keep him safe. There's Matthias Norsgaard for Movistar's about to come up on the right-hand side. He times it the best, turning left into this corner. Because, yeah, if you're at the back during crosswinds, during a cross tailwind, it's, you know, and it's pinned at 55 kilometers an hour, you could be the strongest rider in the world. And if you're on the wrong side of a split, it's game over for you. And that's why Norsgaard had Guerrero in good position. You know, X are pretty well represented here. Valshard, of course, has no problems. In the Vyash, uh, UAE with Groschart and Reformolo were fine. Jayco, I thought, I, I expected them actually to be more aggressive um, trying to split this. It did split, but the group stayed pretty big. Just the front group and, and they were well represented I, I thought you can see they're kind of in a friendly formation and it's gone a bit more to tailwind now with Bahrain chasing because Buitrago was on the wrong side of the split I thought they were going to really put in the gutter and for a longer period of time and because uh, Groenewijk is really good in, in crosswinds I think uh, and maybe the wind changed direction and it's now you see more of a tailwind like they're freewheeling at 70 kilometers an hour down 1% downhill. And you can see by the motorbike, 85 kilometers an hour in the group behind. So I don't know, maybe just the wind wasn't actually that favorable a direction for an extended period of time. Maybe Norsgaard would have shut it down and Volshide anyway. And maybe UAE and, and Jaco now at this point with 14 k's to go, you see that the impetus really come out of the group because I thought, I thought Betrago's group was never making it back. But you see the Cofidis guys telling the you know x rider that uh, i don't know actually what he was saying <laughs> maybe don't pull so hard dsm aren't contributing because milan is still in the group there's no real sprinters that are threatening behind from jaco's perspective it's just with trago here number one bring it back and they're in sight now they've got a lot closer i okay, there is rayevich in the group behind who came second in the stage yesterday but granted they're going to back himself to beat him there's still bowl milan and casper van uden in the group so i think jaco were looking at movistar and UAE, who now move up to be like, you guys pace. There's last year's GC winner on the back with Trago, you pace. And they did come to the front, but it was a little bit too late. And I think it was Mulberger and Norsgaard and Groschartner was pulling for UAE. But maybe he's got his own GC ambitions. And Milan's there at fourth wheel blocking, not pulling through. He's blocking for Bitrago behind. So much to my surprise, I thought Butrago's GC for a second year I was done. But when Nors Norsgaard goes off the front with 8.7 k's to go, and it's not really crosswind now, it's kind of a, I think, a cross headwind, uh, that other group comes back. But at what cost for Rajevic? He was pretty much done um, because of the effort in the crosswind. So Grunewald was still the heavy favourite. So I guess for Jayco, not too much had changed. Ackerman then was off the back with 2 k's to go, and there was a bit of a crosswind from the left, their left shoulder. So from the riders as they're facing it from their left to the right. And that's why you see they're kind of in this diagonal or arrow formation. That's why Milan has been brought up to the front, maybe a little bit too early by Pasqualon, who's going to be leading him out, the Italian duo. And Gronewegen's in a, in a pocket. Uh, near the the end of the road behind his right is being brought up case bowls the big figure for astana and yeah that it's interesting to have like a crosswind flat sprint finish like this and pascal tries his best like he's doing you know two men three men's job but he leaves he leaves milan here in a really tough spot he he sort of hesitated he was like do i bring him over to the dsm train he's then like no i can't get it over there because the wind's coming from his left shoulder and then he just sort of goes back to the right but he, he leaves milan just in no man's land here terrible spot and milan basically has to get in he tries to get in the middle of the grenovian train that ain't happening and he's like case bowl 
he's <laughs> he this is where the stage really is decided he fights case ball for Gronovechen's wheel here uh and the camera angle is going to change so we don't really see but he, <laughs> he puts case ball in the gutter i think not fully but yeah they have a big fight you can see them shouldering and case ball moving close to the edge of the road there so yeah milan just takes uh Groenewegen's wheel off case ball but he's still eating a little bit more wind than Groenewegen you can see Groenewegen's overlapped with his last lead out man I think Mez gets so you know Groenewegen but Jaco doing a really good job here perfect spot for Groenewegen they've come up at a good time and not too early not too late still coming with speed they have the only team with now a lead out man for Groenewegen yes it's 450 to go but and those barriers, those feet, I, I thought for sure they were going to cause a problem. But, you know, launching Groenewegen at 180, 200 is not so bad. But the problem for them is it's kind of taken out of their hands the decision. 300 meters to go, Case Pole decides to launch pretty early <laughs> to launch, especially into the open left hand side. And that then triggers Milan to jump. And Milan beats Case Ball there. And that early jump by Milan before Gronovegan had even thought about launching means that Milan can get across in front of Gronovegan and not provide him with any draft. And he doesn't know that he's won. This is the curious thing. Like, this is not even a close photo finish, but you see it better in the overhead. Milan, because he gets to jump so early and because Gronovegan wasn't ready to go yet, even though he does go up the inside, he then gets boxed in just a little bit here. I don't, I don't think the boxing in made too much of a difference because... It's still 150 to go here, and and he's got open space to his left to jump out at 150, and so I don't think it made too much of a difference. The wind direction, I think, did, and that Milan getting to that barrier was key, and it's harder for Groenewegen to come out of his wheel to the left, but even so, like Milan launched at like 250 to go, so not really a close photo finish, although Milan wasn't sure he'd won. A uh, big win for him. Groenewegen should have seen his face when he was sitting in the sort of winner's circle afterwards. Not happy after the stage, but he's still in the leader's jersey. But Milan gets the win, his third pro win after a couple of pro race victories last year. Bowl third, Blikra fourth, and Max Kanter fifth. Here's what Milan had to say at the end of the stage. I finished last year with uh, two victories in Tour of Croatia and my goal was to start the new season uh, with the uh, Saudi Tour uh, with uh, victories, not just for me, but also for the team, with the other guys. Uh, to, yesterday we tried with Dushan, he finished second. Uh, we did uh, nice work teamwork and yeah I had some problems the last kilometer with my uh, cassette uh, and I couldn't help my teammate in the final sprint today we <laughs> we tried with me and uh, finished yeah I'm super happy about this result we got a nice uphill finish tonight we try to go one on this climb last year but it's slightly different this year a little bit easier we're interesting to see who Bahrain go for but stay tuned for that video until then ciao